We're now into a busy season for aerial applicators. According to the National Transportation Safety Board, 14 aerial applicators crashed in the U.S. during the first quarter of this year. One of those crashes was fatal. There are only three schools in North America which teach agricultural aviation. One of them is just west of Monroe in the town of Ravel. This week in Louisiana Agriculture's Avery Davidson shows us how this school and a new national contest initiative are trying to save lives. As one egg pilot prepares to take flight, another is just touching down at the airport in Rayville. These aerial applicators are at war with the boll weevil. For veteran ag pilot Edwards Barham, a cotton field like this is his battleground. Oh, we did about 20 hours last week. I, it looks like it'll be a little bit more than that this week. Everybody thinks this is air still flying, but it is. When Barham is not swooping down and spraying fields as part of the Louisiana Department of Agriculture's boll weevil eradication program, he spends his time teaching others how to do what he does safely. There are very few places where you can train for ag aviation and we've been at it 10 years now and we think we've had good success. Barham owns Flying Tiger Aviation, a school where students take to the air and learn to fly only a few feet off of the ground. I don't think you could teach somebody to ride a motorcycle standing on the curb watching them go by. You're just not gonna learn to fly a plane like this at any other school. Kevin Peterson is a student at Flying Tiger. I grew up farming in Southeast Idaho and I've loaded these planes, you know, growing up and I've always wanted to do it. And it's, it's time for me to do it now. Ag aviation is a second career choice for Peterson. His first career was in the Army. An improvised explosive device in Iraq cut that career short. So Peterson is here to make sure his career as an ag pilot does not come to an early end. You know, you're not going to be taught at a regular flight school to be flying right off of the ground and under wires. Barham says that's one of the reasons why even experienced pilots need to be trained for agricultural aviation, like the guy wire. From a distance, it's almost invisible. Right up close, that's an inch thick, and it could do some serious damage to a fast-moving plane. And with towers like this cell tower popping up in more and more fields, there are more guy wires ag pilots must avoid. Yeah, they are hard to see. And basically, you have to look at the ground and see where they're anchored. You generally can see the anchor points, and then that's a circle. You just don't go inside that circle. That's why Ag Aviation Magazine is asking its readers to think outside of that circle and outside of the box to design cost-effective markers that would make these wires more visible to pilots. That way there are fewer casualties in this war on crop pests. In Rayville, I'm Avery Davidson for This Week in Louisiana Agriculture. The National Agricultural Aviation Association is sponsoring the No Guy Wire Left Behind contest. The winner of the contest would receive $1,000 and have their design used to mark guy wires across the country.